Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the pros and the cons of the Hurricane, aka the new turbocharged inline six that Stellantis is going to be putting in pretty much every single vehicle across the lineup. And so, with that being said, let's just get right into it. So, let's just do a quick recap on this new Hurricane powertrain. So, it is a twin turbo three liter inline six, most likely going to be paired to the eight speed automatic made by ZF. And it's going to have a regular version and then a high output version. The regular version is going to have at least 400 horsepower and at least 450 pound-feet of torque. And then the high output version is going to have at least 500 horsepower and then at least 475 pound-feet of torque. Uh, so in either tune, it's a very uh, impressive powertrain. But now let's get into the pros and the cons. So I guess we'll start things off on a positive note and leave on a uh, negative note. I know that's not the best thing to do, but you know what? We'll do it for today's uh, video sake. So first off, in terms of pros, this is going to have more horsepower and more torque compared to its Natchi aspirated V8 counterparts. So the regular version is replacing the 5.7 liter Hemi V8, which in its most powerful tune puts out 395 horsepower and then 410 pound feet of torque. And so this is going to have at least more horsepower than that. And it's going to have at least more uh, torque than that by a substantial margin. Uh, and so, right, that's the benefit there. And then over to the 6.4 Hemi, which the high output version is replacing. Again, same thing, it's got more horsepower, more torque than the 6.4 Hemi. And then the other benefit uh, with turbocharged engines is if they're tuned properly, uh, they can give that torque on at a very low RPM amount that a V8 just can't do, right? You're gonna have to rev out the V8 quite a bit to get that peak torque figure. Whereas, again, if the inline six is tuned properly, then you'll get that torque on at really low RPMs. And so you'll have just a much more powerful shove off the line. And on top of that, the peak torque uh, with these turbocharged engines is typically available for a longer duration in the power band. Uh, and so think about it this way, with a naturally aspirated V8, maybe you have to rev it up to like 4,000 RPMs to get peak torque, right? But then with the turbocharged engine, you might only have to get it up to like 1500 RPMs to get peak torque. And then maybe that lasts until like 4,000, 5,000 RPMs again, depending on how the power band is exactly set up. Whereas with the natural aspirate engine, it's like you hit peak torque and then things start right dropping off uh, after that and they're building up uh, before that. So there's some key benefits uh, in terms of how the power band performs with turbocharged uh, engines. And so that's kind of the first thing is more power. And again, depending on how they tune the engine, the torque could be available at lower RPMs and for a longer duration. So it's just going to feel better from an acceleration perspective. Now, the next one is fuel economy, right? Being a turbocharged three liter inline six, it's going to get better fuel economy compared to its V8 counterparts when you're just driving around town. But I do need to put an asterisk in this section because I don't think that towing fuel economy is going to be better. And I'll talk about that uh, in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, driving around town, right? With the smaller engine and all that, it's not going to be as stressed as, well, the V8 is not going to be stressed. But the point that I'm trying to make is it's not going to have to work as hard to get the car up and moving not going to, you know, use up as much gas. And so there is a benefit to that. I mean, look at uh, trucks like the Ford F-150 with the uh, 3.5 liter EcoBoost. That truck gets really good fuel economy when it's not loaded up uh, with stuff in the bed or not towing, uh, especially compared to uh, its V8 counterparts. But on the truck side of things, the problem with turbocharged engines is once you hook up a trailer to this uh, vehicle, then that's where the fuel economy really starts to drop. And so that is a potential downside. It's a pretty big downside is that the towing fuel economy with this powertrain could be substantially worse than the V8 fuel economy. I've seen Fords get single digits with EcoBoosts when they're towing and Rams still getting you know double digits with the fuel economy. So that is a potential downside, not confirmed, but again, potential uh, downside. And uh, the other thing that's great about this powertrain is it'll probably be easier to fit in more vehicles, right? The problem with, especially the 6.4 Hemi is it's so big that it was hard to fit in certain vehicles. Like they really had to stuff that engine in. Whereas, you know, a dinky little three liter twin turbo inline six, that's a lot easier to fit into uh, different types of vehicles. And so we're probably going to get a bigger variety of performance cars uh, from the Stellantis brands because of this uh, new powertrain. So I think that's actually a pretty exciting thing. And then I guess shifting more into the uh, downside uh, stuff, uh, one downside is obviously going to be the sound, right? You just can't beat the sound of a Natch aspirated V8. And so, yeah, even though the new engine's going to have more power, 
get better fuel economy when you're just driving around town and on the highway and it's going to accelerate better. It's just, it's not going to have that V8 sound. Uh, and you know, even though uh, V8s have to kind of build up uh, with the power, with the, uh, in terms of the power band, they still have this nice like smoothness and this nice punchiness with them that you just can't replicate with a uh, turbocharged engine. So that's kind of another uh, little downside. And then the biggest downside, especially for those of you that are truck buyers, is complexity, right? When you have a big Nachi aspirated V8, that's a pretty simple engine. And so when things break, right, it's usually, you know, sometimes it's a pretty complicated fix, but it's usually a relatively simple fix because there's not a lot going on. But when you have a twin turbo three liter inline six, right, you're taking this little engine and you're putting all this power in it and you're having to do a lot of stuff to make that happen and to make it so it gets good fuel economy, it's a complex powertrain. And so reliability, right, we don't know at this point, but could potentially be substantially worse than the five, seven Hemi and the six, four Hemi. And on top of that, when things break, right, it could be a number of things and that could make it so that ownership costs could be more expensive. So it's like, even though you're getting better fuel economy, you're having to pay more maintenance costs. And so then that kind of like offsets the better fuel economy. And so, yeah, that is a pretty big uh, potential downside. And I think that's the biggest downside, especially for people that are truck buyers that tend to keep vehicles for a little bit longer. People that are buying this in a performance car, like a Dodge Challenger or Charger, you know, you're still gonna care about reliability, but probably not as much because it'll probably be a car that you'll just have for a while and then you'll switch to the next fun performance car. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much the pros and cons that I see uh, so far with the engine, with the specs that we know so far. Once Stellantis releases more specs, I'll kind of have a little bit more to go off of and we can kind of talk about more of the pros and cons. Um, but I would like to start like a little bit of a conversation on this uh, topic. So I want you guys to let me know what uh, you're thinking in terms of this uh, new powertrain. Like what are you thinking are the uh, pros and cons of the powertrain? And I guess the biggest thing is if you happen to own vehicles that are made by Stellantis that have either the 5.7 Hemi or the 6.4 Hemi, are you considering, you know, trading in or are you kind of like in a little bit of a rush where you're like, okay, well, I better get my next, uh, you know, newer version of my vehicle that has either the 5.7 Hemi and the 6.4 Hemi before they uh, get rid of it. I'd be, I'd be interested to see kind of like the ratio. Maybe I should do a, a poll on the channel for that. Um, but aside from that, that's going to sum things up. And uh, again, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car seriously, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And I'll see all of you in that next video.